So there we have it again, the us and them, myself and others. I mean, what we're trying to solve through our communication with each other right now is the function of definition and categorization is inherent in language and the rules of grammar. So to a degree, we are trapped within this construct while wishing to talk about it and view it from the outside. And while we're wishing to free the mind of this kind of thinking, we are, you know, and be free of this definition ourselves, we are still trapped within it. So it seems like it's a complete complex that we can't really remove ourselves from. While we're discussing these thoughts, we have to make use of words that in themselves are loaded with meaning. They're not neutral, like any word we use mm -hmm. that we've been brought up with has been defined by the media and by school systems and it's programmed your thinking. And it has, mm. yeah, it has a meaning before it actually has the actual meaning. I really love that you brought up this or that you are bringing up this um, point because there are still so many words in the language that or in the most common language maybe we should or I should say that because obviously I don't know all the languages in the world <laughs> but those that are most yeah. around us or at least around myself that have and use words that are just completely unacceptable and then at the same time I must say it's it's always this I think like also in what I come to think is in pondering about these things for now so many years what I've been trying more and more more over these years is to kind of find this this like middle path my excuse mm. my Buddhist language but um, um. <laughs> But, um, and it's not just Buddhism, of course. There's like many other languages, many other cultures that have the same kind of approach, you know, that mm. rather goes according or has a, has a, it's thinking situated in agreement, you know, where opposite poles don't necessarily need um, separation or don't necessarily mean having to disagree in a way that it is uh, aggressive or violent you know but it is like an acceptance a tolerance and all all that that's that's what i mean you know um, yes so at the same time because of the world being more accessible globally you know in many ways at mm. least um, there are changes in the language that i personally at least really enjoy or the way how yeah. we are thinking about the use of language. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I mean, the, the massive movements of, you know, decolonizing a language is what, you know, you experienced while, while being here in, in South Africa in that sense. And I think it's, it's amazing that those kind of discussions are happening and that, mm -hmm. you know, you can't deny that books were written at a time when humans were thinking about things in a different way. That's part of our history. And maybe this relates back to what you were saying with the middle path. We don't have to necessarily um, completely destroy what came before if we just finally actually had the ability to look at what came before and face mm -hmm. ourselves, face our inherent racism, face our appalling past, face the fact that we've destroyed so many lives as humans, as human being in our human nature that is absolutely terrible, but that we just, just open that up and go, this is what was said then, this word is now wrong, this word needs to change, and that we need to insist on that changing and we need to insist on the language being restructured and that that is something that changes. Because then we allow that ourselves to see ourselves as something that is fallible, but that can become better. Because I think maybe by not going through that process of us actually really looking at ourselves and really looking at our past and really being honest, Maybe that's why we keep holding on to these opposites because we become defensive about something that if we just really found a way to listen to each other and, and find a way to communicate with those differences that we find a place to look at it from who we are now in time, in this point in time. We are not the same humans that 80 years ago didn't have human rights defined in 
a set of laws. We are not those people anymore. We've moved past that and we need to keep moving past that and we need to keep looking at our past in a very critical way. Yeah, I think that is exactly the point because if we think of where are, for instance, human rights based on the history and but then also a certain political systems and all of that, you know, that we're still relating to, I mean, they are hugely based on this colonial behavior, you know, and Absolutely. the disrespect towards other people, you know, other human beings. And so you have to, yes, definitely, and human rights are uh, essential, but even within those human rights, you can't just take the ones that are from after the Second World War. No, you have to consider all, all the different cultures in this world and uh, maybe also, you know, tweak those. They are not a static thing, you know. They are also... Exactly. Because then again, you land in this thing of we know what the ideal human universal, you know, even the, the word universal, I think, is such a tricky one, you know, because who says universal, you know, who's that person or who are those persons saying it is universal? It might just be a group of three. Speaking for everyone. <laughs> yes. <laughs> But they, and... Uh, You know what you were saying just now, when those human rights were uh, created, they came from a very specific situation. And those people that were involved in that situation had, a, a, I guess, a set, in, a, you know, a set in mind. And then, like you say, like the group of three people that speak for a universal kind of thing, it always seems to be this exclusive club, even then, you know, and it's... <laughs> It's not. It's not completely like the the game isn't open to everyone. Although I get, I think there are definitely people in the world that are really trying, that really have the interest of everyone in mind. But if we're now talking politics or the making of laws or something, it's always somebody sending a representative of something that, like someone representing an entire group. So if you're a representative of a group, again, you are representing the interests of that certain group. So you are never really thinking universally, although you, we're hopefully going to try and get there at some point. What I was just saying about the, you know, with the human rights, I think, oh, one of the things, let's not use the you know like I know all the answers but um, <laughs> but I do <laughs> um, this is why we share <laughs> it relates back to what I wanted to talk about today is that a lot of our thinking and like what you said in the beginning this thinking in separation you know mm. so if that is your foundation And for many of us, I think it is, and not, you know, even completely subtly, because also of a certain uh, language that we are used to using, you know. And then obviously, I'm, I'm speaking from a very probably also naive point of view, because I think I, I haven't, I'm blessed with people around me that are mostly really, really, nice people even though obviously I came across people horrible horrible people but I'm very happy I can't look into their mind if you know what mm. I mean so if I speak I, now I think I speak mean. like a very naive person sorry about that yeah no no I what you're saying so but with the the what's happening in America with the Black Lives Matter um, there's Which I think, in, in general, in general, obviously, what it what it um, has ignited all over the world, or in lots of lots of places in the world, let's put it this way, is uh, impressive. And um, as much as it it's like what you see is sometimes. I mean, I, I don't know. I've been you know just like speechless or just feeling like crying. You know, it is at the same time good what it ignited you know so but then you read something and uh, like for instance someone says all lives matter yeah this is absolutely inappropriate to say something like this you know and then in every way in every way but often people don't 
understand why it is inappropriate because isn't it that all lives matter? And then of course your reply can only be of course all lives matter. This should not even be a, a, a question, right? But I think yeah. it shows exactly in in what way people are trapped in this thinking and separation because they turn the movement, let me call it the movement for lack of words, English words, sorry, um, black lives matter into a question of black lives being more worth or more important than others and putting them above. But this is not the issue here at all, you know. So you saying all lives matter as a response to it is actually just revealing you thinking in this separation. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, and 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 you are and and thinking constantly worth based as well, constantly one is above the other. So so basically, when you're saying all lives matter, you're not actually meaning all lives matter. Like your your thinking is not a general holistic. Everything is on the same level. Thinking you're still going. You're saying it in response to something by going, but this is the one that trumps what you're saying. You know, yeah. this is the one that's more important yeah. than what you're saying. So it, it's you are absolute proof of your separation and your separatist thinking and your racism in that mm. sense. Mm. Mm. It's, I don't know, it's completely crazy. Yeah. I mean, I, I guess it stems from the fact that we have never, we, we, we have a history of not seeing ourselves as equal ever you know we we have a, like humans have a way of going we are above nature we you know the world belongs to us and and then we've come from a history of trading with human lives and 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 and, and the most terrible terrible things constantly basing it on something that is above something else and something that has more more value so we've never thought as a collective we've never seen ourselves as a collective and I think it's really important that these things are, are are happening right now because how terrible people have been treated is is really um, I mean there, there are no words for that. There, there's absolutely nothing that can describe what is that what is what has happened. So I mean, what what you said made me think of, of of feminism, and not not to derail this conversation and this this topic that is really about something that is massive right now and massively important. And going, oh, let's now talk about transphobia or feminism or whatever. But I do think all of those things are rooted in the same problem that that whenever somebody is fighting for their right to be purely to be seen as an equal, the other side, the opposing side, comes and goes, but no. Now you're talking about that you're better than us and you're not, and you are placing yourself above us. Whereas all you really want is equality, and and your the conversation about equality keeps getting repurposed. About mm. it's like what you said. It keeps getting repurposed into no, but it's a power play, and it's a this and a that, and it it it, it derails what people are trying to do, where they're purely just trying to talk about let's have a conversation about equality, whether that is gender-based or it's a terrible word but race-based or wh whatever that conversation is it, it, it keeps getting when we're starting to have these important conversations in this sense in a very public way in a, in a being in the street in a protest way it keeps it's like the people that are not wanting certain things to happen just keep making it about something else completely as a way of taking control of the situation. It's yeah, I just had a thought and then um, I thought about something. I, I talked talk too about much. Something <laughs> Sorry. And then I lost my thought. <laughs> what you said, and I was thinking exactly about um, equality. Um, and again, I, I, it brings me back to saying maybe it's a certain... And maybe it's only in two, three generations or something a really re-evaluating words because why do we need gender in this sense? Why do we need, I mean, race, I, as a, 
I, I don't like to talk about myself that much, but as a completely mixed person, if I hear that word, it really, it, 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 I, I don't know, I, I've, it kills me. It really kills me because it's like, then, and you know, because it does something to you as a person. It's like, yeah. leave me the fuck, sorry, but leave me the fuck alone with this, you know? It's like, Absolutely. I am just a human being. I'm not s combined out of r race and, and I don't want to yeah. be categorized by this bullshit, you know? Leave Absolutely. me the fuck alone, <laughs> yeah, honestly. Yeah. It's like, fucking hell. So hopefully, if not, the next generation, the one that's after, maybe they don't have these words as such any longer, you know, maybe they can speak about equality, maybe they don't even have the word equality anymore, maybe they have just a concept of this idea of respect that yes. is, you know, a lot more guided by maybe, I don't know, I don't know, <laughs> because I yeah. live in this world and yeah. right now, you know. My thinking is also stuck. Um, but yeah, that's that's what I wanted to say. Now I'm sweating. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm sorry. Also, I know, and as I was saying that word, I know even for me, I mean, it brings up a lot of stuff, which is why I didn't want to say it like that because it's, a, it's, it's yeah, why do we need to keep being classified at all? We need to get past that thinking. We need to get past the fact that there is that separation. All, all of this categorization, all of this kind of thinking, because it all comes back down to the root of going, why do we have to keep separating ourselves from anything? I think that exactly what's happening right now and then obviously all those years before when people were demonstrating against um, inequality, violence, is our way to hopefully <laughs> at some point end in this thinking in separation. Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. That's at least a hope that I still have. Sorry, my cat is meowing in the background. <laughs> no worries at all. Yes, I mean, the movement right now is vital. The conversations that are being had right now is vital. It is absolutely sad and harrowing to, to see that the only way people can communicate is on a level of having to demonstrate and unfortunately be attacked, but to stand up strongly, that there is no peaceful way to do this or there is no more peaceful way to do this. And I think people have tried, but it is imperative that these movements are happening right now so that in the future we can get away from the separatist thinking. Yeah, definitely. And then so maybe next time we can... <laughs> Because I think um, we can, sorry, it's Pepita. Um, if, cause if we actually, I mean, that is a whole um, topic on its own to talk about systemic violence and, you know, and the, the violence of the state that has been put on people for, I don't know how many years, <laughs> too long. Um, but that's a topic on its own and how we can approach this. Which also, obviously, this movement is exactly what this is about, you know. Our thoughts that we share to communicate, to try and just find our way to thinking towards a better world in which people can communicate and not be having to constantly be sitting on opposite poles, but to find a middle somehow. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful, yes. We shall yeah. dream of better world and in the meantime take action wherever we can. Yeah, definitely. We will cool. chat soon. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers.